Welcome to this week's edition of What's Driving Token Prices. I'm your host, Katie Talati, Director of Research at ARCA. For those joining us for the first time, I'm responsible for identifying and analyzing digital asset and blockchain opportunities for ARCA's funds. As part of our research, my team and I examine token prices and the market events that act as catalysts for price change. Based on our research and market events over the past week, here are some notable token price movements and what we think drove these moves. As a reminder, this commentary is not intended to be investment advice, investment research, or an investment recommendation. Please consult your investment professional for your own circumstances. All right, guys, it's been another uh, exciting week. Unfortunately, a lot of um, down sell pressure, but we will see where we go from here. Um, the Bitcoin ETF flows have been all people can talk about. Grayscale and um, has obviously seen a ton of outflows since converting to an ETF. Um, in, interestingly enough, the FTX estate has chosen to liquidate their GBTC holdings um, this way. And um, there's also been some information sent out to Mt. Gox creditors. Um, if you haven't followed that, that was 2014 hack of one of the prominent exchanges. Folks are finally getting their bankruptcy settlements potentially in October of this year. We'll see. It has been pushed back many times. Uh, so there could be some uh, trouble still ahead. But let's talk about some actual tokens that's, uh, and stuff going on in the market this week. So first up, we're going to talk about Orca. So um, uh, Orca is the Solana-based decentralized exchange. Um, they implemented a government change this last week that turned on the DEXs fee switch. So for context, most DEXs, which are actually forks of Uniswap, um, are uh, have a built-in fee switch. And the idea is that the fee switch should um, siphon off kind of part of the fees that are paid to liquidity providers um, who basically make markets in these um, these single-sided or these uh, two-sided pool swaps. And they, uh, and then part of that fee would, you know, be taken out and either paid out to token holders, the DAO, or some other, you know, party. So, um, the in the case of Orca, the govern, the, there was a governance vote needed to activate the fees, which um, I've talked a ton on here about Uniswap and how they have tried and failed a couple times to pass a fee switch vote. It just hasn't happened. It's not in the cards for them. Um, and so Orca managed to actually do this. Um, the new fee switch is going to, so sorry, I said, what did I say? The, it's basically activating it within the three-year-old protocol. Um, so the newly implemented 12% fee switch is going to be funneled to Orca's DAO. Um, and, uh, of that, you know, the 12% fee is only on certain stable pools. So on some of the really low fee ones, there's still not, there's not going to be a cut basically taken back, but on the higher fee pools, um, those are going to go back to the DAO. Um, so, so some interesting stuff. Um, what's really cool is that, uh, you know, Orca has brought in about $59 million in fees since inception. That's all been paid to liquidity providers. None of it's gone to the Dow. Um, and they think over the next year, based on current levels, we could see about $30 million in fees um, brought in or $30 million um, over the next year. So um, unfortunately, despite this news, Orca is down 17% on the week. All right, next up, we're going to talk about Sui Network. Um, so uh, yesterday, Mistin Labs, the for-profit entity behind developing the Sui blockchain, announced a set of new features to support the Sui ecosystem. Um, and basically, they're going to be ass assisting ecosystem developers with support from Alibaba Cloud. Um, so Alibaba Cloud was kind of like a previously announced launch partner. The builders behind Sui, um, they came from like Facebook, and they worked on kind of the DM or Libra project um, way back in the day, if you remember that. Um, and so they bring a lot of um, Web2 connections with them. So specifically, though, Mistin Labs announced that they're going to be developing an AI-assisted tool to help developers write code in the Move programming language using natural language prompt. So pretty cool. They showed a, sh a short video snippet. But basically, you could say, I would like to do this and execute this. And it basically gives you the code in the programming language instead of the developer having to maybe go and build it themselves. Um, it's a huge hurdle, especially when someone's learning a new pro programming language, um, if you're not familiar with you know, the, move, um, the move language or the sweet blockchain. So very cool use of AI in developing blockchain. I like it. Um, in addition, Alibaba Cloud is also going to be supporting the um, support incubators and demo day events for projects building on Sweep and offer full node services on the blockchain. That basically just means if you want to spin up a node, you can use um, cloud their cloud infrastructure to do so. Um, so super cool. Sweep is actually only down three per, or Sweep is down about three percent for the week, but actually yesterday, following this announcement, they um, the token did shoot up about eleven percent. Um, so. We'll be seeing more from this uh, up and coming L1. 
Okay, next we're going to talk about Frax. So um, last week, DeFi conglomerate Frax announced the launch of its Frax bonds, or FXB product for short. Um, so FXBs are zero coupon bonds issued by the Frax project, and they're going to be paid out in Frax stablecoins at maturity. Um, the people who, those who purchase the bonds do so via a gradual Dutch, Dutch auction design. Um, the protocol basically plans to use the proceeds from the bonds to invest in a combination of U.S. treasuries, overnight repo agreements, um, like USD currency and um, money market funds, um, with a small slice uh, set aside to invest in more DeFi strategies that are a bit more up the risk curve. Um, and the idea is like that will enhance the overall yield by kind of giving you this like blended yield of products. Um, FXBs are designed to mirror the rate paid on U.S. treasuries, but should be more convenient um, for those in the DeFi ecosystem, as they should also be widely available across DeFi um, on venues such as Curve, um, within Frax's own, um, you know, lending and borrowing protocol, and also within their stable swap. And I'm sure the distribution will grow from there. All right. Oh, and then Frax is up about 10.9% on the week. All right. Last up, we have Ondo. So um, last week, um, real, world, real World Asset Tokenization Protocol Ondo Finance released their token, Ondo, um, which will primarily serve as the governance token for the Ondo DAO. So since its inception in 2021, Ondo Finance has amassed, managed to amass about $188 million in TVL. Um, the, pro the protocol's main business line enables users to invest their stablecoins and tokenized bond products represented by a mixture of U.S. treasuries, short-duration investment-grade bonds, and high-yield corporate bonds. Um, users are able to trade these products on-chain while having exposure to the underlying real-world assets. So pretty cool product, definitely um, some real-world use cases, and they have some healthy TVL. So following the re release of the token, Ondo is also listed on Coinbase, Huobi, slash HTX, and Bybit for trading. Finally, the project announced that they're going to be expanding to the APAC region, allowing investors in that area to get exposure to U.S. securities. Um, since Ondo is a new issue, it has really outperformed. It's up about 48.5% since launch. All right, that's all I have for you guys this week. I hope you enjoyed our insights. Tune in here again next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Pacific to hear what's driving token prices.